Canada. Famous for its breathtaking waterfalls, expansive wilderness, and big carnivores. But there's so much more to Canada's biodiversity than bears and wolves, as I discovered on a recent trip to British Columbia. Let's take a look at what I found out. I travelled to an area on the west coast of Vancouver Island. I based myself in Tofino on a body of water known as Clarkwatt Sound. The surrounding area is rich in temperate rainforest and diverse marine ecosystems. Let's look at the temperate rainforest and answer the first big question of the episode. What is a temperate rainforest? We've all heard of tropical rainforests, like the Amazon, and they can be found, unsurprisingly, in the tropics. Temperate rainforests are found outside the tropics, in landscapes that are both mountainous and coastal. These conditions generate a huge amount of rainfall, around 3 metres a year in Clarkwatt Sound. Coupled with moisture from sea fog, this generates a continuous growing season in forests dominated by conifers. British Columbia is home to a quarter of the world's temperate rainforest, a rare habitat on the global scale. The forests here are home to a diverse array of species, including fungi, birds and mammals, not to mention the incredible array of plant life. Yet this remarkable habitat was threatened in the past by logging. The threats came to a head in 1993, resulting in one of the largest acts of civil disobedience in Canadian history with around 800 arrests. The war in the woods, as it became known, led to Clarkwatt Sound being designated as a biosphere reserve by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. So that brings us to the second big question of this episode. What is a biosphere reserve? UNESCO state that biosphere reserves aim to reconcile the importance of wildlife with the need for human activity. Biosphere reserves have three zones. The core zone, largely protected. The buffer zone, where some human activity can take place. And the transition area, where the greatest level of human activity takes place. Hopefully, in a sustainable manner. I say hopefully, because not everyone thinks the reserve offers sufficient protection. There is current controversy over potential logging on Flores Island and local environmental groups are watching the situation carefully. Perhaps they're hoping for a similar result to the recent agreement in January 2016 that protected 85% of the Great Bear Rainforest, a huge area of habitat that lies to the north of Clarkwatt Sound and home to the Spirit Bear, a pale subspecies of the Black Bear. But the forests aren't the only important areas in Clarkwatt Sound. The marine life is also spectacular. The temperate rainforest on land is mirrored underwater by kelp forests. Kelp is a huge type of seaweed, capable of growing up to 30 centimeters a day, depending on the species. The kelp forms dense stands that provide critical habitat for a huge range of creatures, including rockfish, sea anemones, and crabs. Why is the marine life so diverse? It results from a complex combination of factors, one of which includes the upwelling of cold, nutrient-rich water that supports vast numbers of microscopic organisms. These organisms, known as phytoplankton and zooplankton, support the complex food chains involving larger animals. We've looked at both temperate rainforest and marine ecosystems, but the two don't sit in isolation, they are intricately connected. One of these connections is salmon. Millions return each year to watersheds around the coast to spawn. Not all of them survive, and many end up as food for both marine and land animals. Around 130 species in the area have salmon as part of their diet, and this includes at least 27 terrestrial mammals, like raccoons and bears. That's not even mentioning the birds, such as the bald eagle. This represents a flow of nutrients from the marine environment into the terrestrial forest. Studies using isotopes have even shown that up to 20% of the nitrogen in trees next to these waters is derived from salmon. So, 
In conclusion, although bears and wolves are amazing, there is so much more to Canada's biodiversity than large furry carnivores. Perhaps more importantly, our look at the rainforest and marine ecosystems has shown there's a greater connectivity between biodiversity than we might have otherwise assumed. It's an important lesson, and Clarkot Sound makes for an impressive classroom. Until next time.